Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part three of our Castle Ruin series and in this video we're going to finish up the water and we're going to start working on the old castle ruins. If you're following along traditionally check out part one of this series and I will show you all the list of pastels that I use and all the materials that go along with it and all the different papers that you can use. We're going to be using Infinite Painter for Android and we're going to go ahead and start by adding in the cloud reflections into the water. So you want to go ahead and just add indications of what the clouds look like we're not going to make a really big detailed reflection look here, but we just kind of want the indication of clouds in the sky. So I went ahead and added some of the cloud color and then I'm blending it in right quick. But I'm leaving some of the color still in there. Make sure that you don't kill all of the color, but you just kind of want a little bit of an indication that it looks like it's reflecting the clouds in the sky and if you're following along traditionally probably use your pastel stick use white pastel or a really light off-white and just go ahead and use your your cloth or your paper towel for blending that in because you want to you want it blended in pretty good so here I'm going to go ahead and I blended I merged the two layers down so that I can add another layer and start by putting the castle on it. So I found a, a photo at Pixabay that I liked of the castle ruins and I'm not going to use all of that photo but I wanted the big part of the tower sticking up and I liked the way that the sunlight was hitting it. So I'm going to go ahead and use that tower for my castle in this painting. And again, I've said <laughs> that you can take different photos and just take uh, different elements from them and combine them together to make your own painting. And so here I'm taking a dark brown color and probably you would use your pastel pencil for this and just go ahead and start adding in the shapes of old ruined towers and old ruined walls that have fallen down. I'm using yellow ochre or kind of a medium yellow color for the sunlight part where the walls are being hit by the sunlight. And you can use a dark umber color probably for the, the shadow. You can even throw in purple if you want to. Purple is a good shadow color. And I'm just trying to make sort of a texture of old bricks and old rocks that these castles were made of. So I'm doing kind of a, a crosshatch pattern there on the back part and just trying to give it sort of an old rocky look to the castle. And we want the edges to look jagged and, and not real straight because this is a castle ruin and it's mostly gone except for a few walls. And I'm adding in a little bit of the shadow color again along the edges. You can use your photo reference to see where the shadows are going to fall. And then you just make sure that your whole picture lines up with the light that you're using from that photo reference. So I'm adding in a little bit of broken walls and the tower just just giving it a little bit of texture, make little rough strokes there, don't erase all of it. Just kind of keep it rough looking and you can add in darks and lights. Just go back and add in the darks and the lights looking at your photo reference and just trying to get the shape of the tower and you can add different different browns if you want to for the shadows and the darker part. And here I'm adding in the darker part and then I need to go back and add in some more of the sunlight. So I'm working on that. Just going back and forth, adjusting the shape of the castle, fixing what I don't like there and making the walls look more jagged. 
and just using that yellow color and again you'll be using your pastel pencil for this because it helps making the for making the details when you're using pastel I've extended the back of the tower a little bit added some more jagged edges on the top like the top has fallen off of the castle here just working on the shapes of it and making sure that the edges are not smooth. We don't want smooth edges for this castle. We want it to look rough and, and ramshackle, like it's completely fallen down and there's just a little bit of it left. And I'm extending it out to make it look like maybe there was a wall that went around it, a protective wall, and just adding a little bit of some jagged edges sticking up and adding a little bit of some light to make it look like the light is hitting it just a little bit on those jagged edges. And then here I'm working on the back and straightening it up just a little bit. And I want to use the Julian brush or the Blackwell brush in the sketch category because this gives you a really good pastel texture. And so I'm straightening up one wall and that will give it a good contrast because it will show that it was once a building and it had a man-made structure to it and that just gives it kind of the big contrast to the one good wall and then all the ruined walls that have fallen down and crumbled and here i'm adding a little bit of the texture using the sketch brushes and the julian brush is really good for that and i've gone back and i'm using some of the paintbrush categories just to blend things in a little bit better here and I'm just trying to make the the good wall right there a little bit straighter and I'm using the straight line tool in Infinite Painter and if you're following along traditionally you can use a ruler if you really need it or just some kind of a, a little straight edge and so I'm just going ahead and adding a little bit more of the texture back, making the walls look a little bit more jagged. And here I'm starting to add in the highlight to the edges of the castle wall. And again, it's uneven and it's jagged and the line is broken. Make sure it's a broken line and use your pastel pencil for this. And just go ahead and make broken, jagged lines because that gives an indication of bricks and stones that have broken off part way. And you can go ahead and add in a little bit of the dark in between the, the light yellow just to give it more brick-like indications. And then I'm showing a little bit of the structure of the tower on the top. Just tweaking that, refining it a little bit more, adding in the highlights, adding in pockets of dark, just trying to get that texture that we want that shows that this was once a man-made object. And I'm using a little bit of cross hatching right here, again, to give it sort of the brick-like texture or the rock-like texture. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the Julian brush just to give it some more pastel texture on the back. Plus it helps to give it that rock texture. And then there's up there on top of the tower, there's one window left. And so I'm using a dark brown color and use your pastel pencil for this if you're following along traditionally. And just give it a little bit more of a texture there. So this is the end of part three of our Castle Ruin series. And in part four, we're going to work on the grass some more and the water and also add the rock wall ruins that are in the foreground. So thanks everybody for your support. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later.